Hi, this is Kurt Barone, and welcome to another edition of File Law Roundup. Okay, let's keep going. Um, I'm going to make this next one sort of easy. You may want to make it complicated, but let's go to Denver. And we have the Denver Fire, um, who won at the Federal Court of Appeals, a very, you know, mid-level, but right below the U.S. Supreme Court. They won on a discrimination suit, but... I don't know where you want to take this, but let me sum this up very quickly. An individual is injured ultimate, and, descri- and claims he's being retaliated against and discriminated against, files a suit, and the suit ultimately is dismissed on, let's not call it a tech, you, most people would call this a technicality, a technicality. In my world, I call this lawyer malpractice, and I'm not saying the lawyer messed up. I don't know here. But they missed a filing date, a 300-day filing date, not because they didn't file in what they thought was the right time, but because they didn't file in what the court said that was the right time. So you have 300 days from something, that's what we're going to talk about, to file um, your suit. And here in the ADA and Title VII, now this was an ADA issue, but it follows Title VII. And what happened here is the individual claims I'm constructively discharged on a certain date, and he and the court found that he was constructively discharged on the day when he gives notice um, to the Denver Fire Department. Um, so what happens, though, is they don't start the, the plaintiff, the person who's you know discriminated against, allegedly, said that I was I filed from a different date. He uses a later date saying, well, but this is when I was actually discharged. Um, and the court says, no, when you gave notice. Um, that's when you are constructively discharged. So in other words, they messed up the date. I don't know that it matters. You, we can explain what I'm saying. It looks like it's three days. English. As I, as I see it, it's about a three day difference. Yeah. Well, and, and by the way, there is no, oh, we'll just waive it for good cause with these things. <laughs> 300 days is, is strict and you miss it by a day. There's not like, oh, judge, please, in the interest of justice, just, you know, let me sue them. You're out. So here they have that a constructive discharge claim accrues, meaning the time starts ticking when the employee gives notice of his resignation, not on the effective date of the resignation. So if you go to your employee and say, you're discriminating against me, you're doing this, you're doing that, I'm I'm out on a later day. No, it's the earlier day when you told them you're done. So here's my whole point to this very complicated set of facts. I look at this easily. When you go hire a lawyer, you better ask your lawyer if you know this law. Do not start caught, right? How many discrimination suits have you handled? How many ADA suits have you handled? How, you go to a lawyer who actually knows these things, not your real property lawyer, your parents' friend's lawyer, right? Somebody who knows this stuff because this is highly technical. And I will say this, everybody knows in my law firm, we get within a month, within two weeks of any deadline, and I am, that is too late for me. I don't ever file anything. Oh, let's just wait. We have till Monday. Let's wait till Monday. Heck no, right? We're going to file it two weeks beforehand. Why? Because I don't like screwing up for my clients and I don't like being sued for malpractice. So please, when you hire lawyers, make sure they understand these very complicated issues and always err on the side of the earliest date possible right? Especially for filing. And this comes up a lot, not just in this case. I'm going to expand this issue. All the time we have, well, I was injured here, but it might have happened here. Well, this is the first date. Choose the earliest date ever for the date your time starts ticking to file any claim. You'll never be wrong that way. And this this uh, firefighter, uh, David uh, Perez, um, he's got some other litigation. Uh, you and I spoke about him last April, I believe, um, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, he he's got a he's got a uh, separate suit now against the city and the union over roughly the same things. I don't know if mm-hmm. one's gonna. Yeah, I, I don't know how factually he's going to be able to pursue them, but it's it's essentially over the same things. Claiming that they uh, just go back. It's uh, April 18th that it was posted, but uh, a Denver firefighter who was placed on light duty and later granted a disability pension following his injury has filed suit against the city and IFF Local 858, claiming they conspired to violate its rights. So he's going under more of a civil rights type of- Of course, conspiracy requires an underlying claim of wrongdoing. Yeah, so, um, 
you know, I, I don't know, uh, but he's got he's got another avenue. So uh, which makes it kind of I, I wonder why he decided to pursue this on appeal. But um, at, at any rate, he has he has some other recourse that he's pursuing as well. So his next stop after this Tenth Circuit decision would be the U.S. Supreme Court. I don't think it's going to uh, be of uh, significance enough for the U.S. Supreme Court to entertain it. He may appeal it. But the U.S. Supreme Court is very limited in the number of cases that they take. They get somewhere eight to ten thousand yeah. applications, and they take uh, less than two hundred uh, cases. Yeah, you, you've got like a less than a percent chance of yeah. of getting there. So oh. yeah, it's very very difficult. Yeah.